go! I'm just getting started, but I'm psyched! Here's the start of my westward crossing over the Rocky Mountains after leaving Denver this morning. Ahead of me are several roads and a bike path passing through the towns of Genesee and Evergreen before reaching Colorado Highway 103 where I will start climbing Juniper and Squaw Pass at a peak elevation of 11,130 feet. Well, since I've been uh, off the bike for five days and not stretching or barely riding at all, I've been feeling cramps, especially my glutes and hamstrings since five miles in. I'm uh, close to 20 miles right now. I kind of suspected that was gonna happen. So what I've done is eat, uh, drank a lot of electrolytes like powder, Pedialyte is what I use. I put uh, one packet in 16 ounces and then I uh, hydrated a lot and had a good breakfast. But I also, I stopped every time I start feeling cramps. I've stopped four times so far. And I just stretch out, I take my time, and it goes away right away. I think the worst thing I can do is continue on and think that it's gonna work itself out, because that's when you can cause injury. So I just stop as soon as I can, any place I can lean the bike on and stretch out, and just keep going. I just did it, and I, all my uh, kinks are gone. And I suspect they'll come back, so. I just keep doing that and by the end of today and tomorrow I should, by tomorrow i should be just like i was before i stopped five days ago as i climb to the u.s route 40 and genesee ridge road intersection i get my first real glance of the rocky mountains there they are beautiful and snowed on their peaks and i'm heading that way Super, super beautiful. I can't wait. Oh man, how beautiful. So far this morning, I've ridden 15 miles, climbing over 2,500 feet to reach the 2.6 mile long Genesee I-70 bike path. I've managed with the great anticipation of climbing this magnificent mountain range here in Colorado during the last month while crossing the Midwestern states, and I am beyond excited at what lays ahead. I just went airborne right there. <laughs> I saw the marker, but I uh, didn't pay attention to it. Just like that, you could get in trouble. I crank a pair of easy miles on the Genesee I-70 bike path before reaching the northern end of Evergreen. As of now, I continue to be unaware of the gigantic task ahead. Even though the elevation gain between Denver and Juniper Pass is about 5,800 feet, I end up climbing an extra 700 feet to get there. This is due to the seemingly endless topographical wrinkles that make up the Rockies. For instance, the town of Genesee now behind me is close to 600 feet above the town of Evergreen ahead. Even though I love to climb, this day put me to the test with close to 6,500 feet of climbing at an average grade of 4.3% and the difficulty of my body managing to deal with the altitude gain and its lower levels of oxygen. I'm getting a lot of diversion between uh, bike paths, frontage roads, and now uh, the 74 state road. But it's all good. Traffic's not bad. Once I reach the north end of Evergreen, I take Colorado Highway 74, otherwise known as Bear Creek Road. This hook-shaped state highway runs 18 miles between the towns of El Rancho and Morrison. It was originally built in 1873 with over 20 wooden bridges to allow for mining and logging access into Bear Creek Canyon. Much of Highway 74 is considered a scenic drive known as the Treasure House of Beauty and Pleasure. It's famous for its granite cliffs, multitude of trees and plants, flowers of all sorts and powerful mountain stream. After four miles I make the right turn onto Squaw Pass Road, Colorado Highway 103. Smooth uh, going so far. I'm 26 miles in and I got 18 to go to get to Echo Lake and uh, got off the busy. I'm on this uh, 103, even though it doesn't have a shoulder. It seems uh, way friendlier for cycling. I'm definitely uh, feeling the elevation, but I'm just gonna deal with it. In a day or two, I should be acclimated. It turns out this acclimation to altitude was not at all what I expected. During the next hour of climbing, I would ride over the 8,000 feet in elevation, consider the boundary where someone can start feeling the symptoms of altitude sickness. 
Symptoms vary, but in my case, I had shortness of breath and rapid breathing, fast heart rate, and at times dizziness. Two days after climbing above 11,000 feet, my friends Ryan and Anta from Aspen explained to me that even though I would feel better in the coming days, I would continue to have some of these symptoms, and sure enough, that's the way it went. I'm definitely short of breath, but uh, not bad. And my legs feel good. I'm in a groove, but uh, I cannot wait to catch up to the elevation. Woo! Steady climbing. I'm getting whooped. I'm doing it though. Just short of breath. But I'm up here now. Just gotta keep doing it. I read my body and keep climbing. Slow and easy. The grade's not that bad. It's not a low grade, but it's not bad. So I just gotta keep a steady pace. Thirty-three miles, and I'd call it a steady grind. It's not steep, and it's not low grade. It's uh, legit, and it's steady, long, and never like stopping ever. Just ten miles to go. Just gotta let my heart rate go down, cause uh, it's working really hard to make up for all the lack of oxygen. I gotta be patient with myself right now and keep uh, steady climbing, taking breaks. This is gonna be the hardest climb I'll have to do, I think. <sighs> well, I'm not done with the day, but at least I made it to a squall pass in 34 miles, 9,608. No, 9,807. But I still gotta get to uh, 10,500 at um, Echo Lake. I'm definitely dizzy, exhausted, a little bit on the heavy breathing for a long time now. I'm trying to keep my heart rate down by stopping and letting it chill out and uh, powering through. no joke it's a punishing climb officially I'm uh, digging deep I have no idea how my legs are still churning one of the most tasking climbs I've ever had to do I'm at uh, 38 and a half miles I really only have four and a half miles to go but the elevation difference from 5,500 to I'm over uh, 10,000 right now for sure. It's uh, getting to me. Like I'm having a hard time focusing and I'm like really climbing right next to a precipice. I'm putting a lot of attention into uh, staying focused on staying on the road. <laughs> And I feel like my lung, lungs are burning from the, just breathing so fast all the time for so many hours in a row. All right, I gotta keep moving. I see a descent here. I hope it's uh, signs of uh, some uh, freebie miles ahead of me. I could use it. That was punishing. I sure, sure hope that was it, because I am exhausted. Like I uh, haven't been cycling before. It's no joke, punishing climb. I stopped because uh, I got chilled just uh, going downhill. It's cold up here. I don't know how cold, but probably 30. All right, I got my vest, hoodie. Feel a little bit better. And I just, uh, I just uh, 
I'm punished. I'm so punished right now. But elevation can get you so, so easily. I just cannot stop from breathing faster than I want to. All right, let's get up. Let's get in there and uh, finish it up. No, no more climbing. More climbing. So it is. I gotta keep at it a little bit longer. And just like that, I reached Juniper Pass's highest point at 11,130 feet in elevation, where I stopped to take in the stunning views before starting my descent to Echo Lake. This might be it. Three and a half miles to go. I was climbing there for a while after that little descent, but I'm uh, back to going down. Woo! Let's go! Four! Yes! Yes! Woo! Come on, keep it up! Yeah! Woo! Man, what a day! That was insane! I'm going to pay attention! Woo! After that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> There's something about climbing is punishing, but the reward of having gotten here and seeing all that earned. As it's obvious, I've clearly become a bit loopy by now from the first of many passes I'll be doing in the coming weeks. I'm elated and I've fully come to grips with what lays ahead of me and can't help but to feel as happy as I possibly can. As tasking as Juniper Pass was, the ones ahead of me proved to be equally difficult. In no time I descend to Echo Lake where I was planning on camping, but instead decide to descend the 13 miles to Idaho Springs, taking advantage of the spectacular sunset lighting up the fall-colored cottonwood trees. Idaho Springs is uh, 15, 20 miles all downhill, so I can just bundle up and go down. I'm sure I can figure out where to camp down there. It's 3,000 feet of elevation lower. So 13 miles to Idaho Springs and I should figure out camping there. I'm gonna get my gloves out and uh, shoot down there. the sand that was amazing it's warmer down here too 
Crazy day today. I'm riding into uh, Idaho Springs, close to a 60 mile day. It's been a doozy and I'm ready to uh, stop. Well, not necessarily right now because I'm downhilling, but I'm starving. I've only had two biscuit sandwiches for breakfast and two uh, cliff bars. And I've climbed 5,000 plus miles, uh, feet in 60 mile day. I think I've, uh, I think I need some food. I reached the city of Idaho Springs and take a quick look around riding on Miner Street with its multitude of shops and restaurants before finding a grocery store and a place to crash. The descent took a toll on me chilling my body to the core so I looked for a motel where I could grab a hot shower and rest up. Memories of this fantastic day are still and forever will be engraved in me. Once again the struggles of bicycle touring prove themselves worthy of amazing rewards.